What's up guys and happy Halloween. This is Jake Parker with The Collector's Crypt and today's video is going to be a little different. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more freeform. Uh, I want to take some time to talk about some of the essential Halloween movies that we all kind of know and love. Won't spend a ton of time on those, but I also wanted to give you some very unique suggestions and recommendations of movies that I like that you hopefully haven't heard of. Um, so it'll be a little bit new for you guys. I would say even if you can't get to everything this week, um, keep watching movies because horror is fun all year round. So without further ado, let's get into some of the heavy hitters. Hocus Pocus obviously needs no introduction, uh, but it is a perfect example of a movie that would not get made for kids uh, today, which is really cool. So it's kind of a unique time capsule. There's a lot of dark imagery and themes and some innuendo that's a little, uh, a little heavy. But uh, I, I loved it. I had a great time with this. This was a lot of fun. Uh, Hocus Pocus, obviously, you're going to check it out. Next up on the list is Halloween. Um, this is the Halloween box set. I'm, I'm holding this up because I would say that really any Halloween uh, movie, there, there are some that are better than others uh, for sure, but I would say any Halloween movie, if you wanted to put it on, you're going to get that Halloween theme and feel. Um, personal suggestions, number one, uh, obviously the original classic, uh, four and, and five, four honestly to me has the opening of four is kind of the pinnacle Halloween imagery. It's gorgeous. The cinematography is really great. Uh, five is great. H2O is a lot of fun. Um, you can get into the Rob Zombie movies if you want. Uh, that's kind of another conversation. And as well as the 2018 remake. I don't personally love the 2018 remake that much, but um, it does have a lot of good Halloween imagery as well as it is a slasher. And so it's a lot of fun to see a modern slasher. So the 2018 is a good option as well, but pretty much anything in this box set's going to treat you well uh, this week. Amongst horror fans, Trick or Treat is kind of a Halloween staple. Uh, Michael Doherty um, went on to direct things like Krampus and Godzilla King of Monsters, but Trick or Treat is a awesome little horror anthology uh, set on Halloween night. You're gonna get great visuals. You're gonna get really cool set pieces. Uh, this is a must watch this season. And a lot of people are gonna tell you to watch this movie and I'm gonna back them up because Trick or Treat is awesome. So watch it this week. Seriously. Last up on the heavy hitters list is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. If you haven't seen this movie, it's awesome. Um, I watch it every year on Halloween night. Um, it is a tradition for me and it is a staple of the season. Um, I've watched this with my family growing up for years and it's just so much fun. Watch it with somebody who knows the soundtrack, maybe somebody who's actually acted in the live play or if there is an opportunity this year, I know COVID's kind of, uh, you know, put in a dampen on, on a lot of live events, but if there is a live showing that you can either watch or stream or something like that, check that out because the fans of this movie make the experience. Um, Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, is a must watch. Okay, so first up on my unique recommendations is going to be Seventh Moon. This movie has Amy Smart and it's from 2008 and it is directed by none other than Eduardo Sanchez, the, one of the co-directors of the original Blair Witch Project. And you guessed it, it is a found footage film. The thing I love about this film is what they're able to do with the creatures on a very low budget. It's pretty much straight up just makeup and some camera effects and they use the camera to their advantage to create really creepy imagery. I really like this movie and hopefully you'll check it out. Next up, we have Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. This is a movie made by Frank De Felita. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. It is from 1981 and it is a, a uh, made for TV horror film. It's a tragic film, to be honest. Um, the story it tells is, is pretty tragic. A lot of good kills, um, great story. I think this is a strong watch. The next movie I have been ringing its bell for years. It is called Panic Button. It is by Chris Crow and it was made in 2011. It is a UK horror film. Um, this movie is so cool. Uh, it is a siege narrative. It's all pretty much set in a plane. And what it does, it's kind of a psychological thriller in a way, uh, mixed with some horror. Um, and I think it's a great time. I think that it would be a, a lot of fun and maybe kind of a different addition to your watch list this year. Next up, we have Ty West's House of the Devil. This movie was made in 2009, but you would think it's from the 80s because the time that went into making this look period accurate is amazing. Um, it's not unnoticed here. 
I, I, you could put this right next to any classic horror film and think that you're watching something from the exact same era. It, it's a bit of a slow burn, but I really enjoy the, the burn up to what happens in the end, and I actually think this movie really pays off. I will say, my first watch of this movie, I didn't love it. Uh, but my second watch with a good sound system and really just paying attention, I thought this movie really executed its material extremely well. Uh, definitely check out House of the Devil. I would say this is on the higher end of my personal recommendations. Um, so if you have a chance to slide this in, um, I would say do that. So uh, great movie. Okay, so the next film is actually one of my all-time favorite horror films. It is directed by Stuart Gordon and it came out in 1995. It is Castle Freak. Not only is this gonna be a good movie to watch this week, but it's gonna be a good movie to watch any time of the year. I think the special effects in this movie are incredible. The story that it tells are re is really, really good. Um, the atmosphere is super cool, and there's some great fight sequences towards the end. Um, I love this movie so much that I actually have a Castle Freak oil painting in my room um, and that was done and professionally framed and everything, so uh, I truly do love this movie, and I think that you should give it a watch if you have not already. Ranking even higher on my favorite films of all time, Dead Alive, Peter Jackson's, I believe, second film. Uh, that is Peter Jackson from the Lord of the Rings trilogy and so on and so forth, the Peter Jackson. Uh, made quite literally the goriest film I've ever seen. And I watched this back in 2016, so I was actually a little later to it. This was from 92. Um, and at, at the time, I thought there's no way this could be the goriest film of all time. Uh, guess what? I believe this is the goriest film of all time, and I've seen a lot, a lot of gore in movies. This movie is a blast. I, if you're into this type of stuff, you're going to be smiling from ear to ear. Um, I show this to people all throughout the year. I do screenings of this movie because I think it's so important and I think it's so much fun. And every time, it's just grin ear to ear and people are wincing and cringing. And I, personally, I just think this is one of the funnest movie experiences that I have ever had and I continue to ever have. Please, by all means, even if you have to drop a pinnacle classic this Halloween season, make Dead Alive a priority. You will not be disappointed. And if you are, please contact me in the comments and I'll tell you why you might be wrong. I think Dead Alive is one of the greatest films ever and I think you should watch it this Halloween season. And if you don't get it to this Halloween season, make it a priority. It's fun any time of the year. Okay, so the next film is a 2015 film called Gravy. It is directed by James Rodriguez. Um, not only do I like to watch this on Halloween, but I like to watch this on Thanksgiving as well, preferably right after my Thanksgiving meal if I get a chance. Um, you'll kind of know why whenever you watch the movie, but basically some, uh, some bad guys break into a Mexican cantina and force the crew to uh, engage in a night of gluttony. And you'll kind of figure out what that means as you watch the movie. I don't want to give away too much, but this movie is a lot of fun. Um, it, yeah, it's just a good time, and uh, I think you should check it out. This next film, I have been ringing its bell since 2014 when it came out. This is Adam Robitel's The Taking of Deborah Logan. Just recently got a physical media release this year. This is a faux documentary horror found footage film. Um, it's it's very, very good, very well executed. I enjoy this movie a lot, um, but the joke was kind of on me because I tried to play a trick on my mom. Uh, we had a grandma who was dealing with Alzheimer's, and um, this is not to make light of that by any means, but I showed this movie to my mom because she was dealing a lot with my grandma, and I said, Mom, this is a real documentary about Alzheimer's. Knowing well and good that about halfway through the film, the tone shifts, and anybody watching it is going to know that it's no longer a documentary. It is a horror film. Uh, but the, again, the joke was on me because my mom, about mm, three-fourths of the way into the movie, kept saying things like, yeah, no, that's accurate. Grandma does that too. And I'm like, um, mom, I feel like I didn't need to tell you this at this point, but this is a horror film. And if grandma's doing these things, then we need to have another talk. So, um, The Taking of Deborah Logan is a suggestion on my end, and uh, I, I personally feel like it is a scary ride and it's gonna get your blood going, so check it out. Next up, we have The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Um, this is by the guy who did Troll Hunter and Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And I think this is a blast. I think the tension builds really, really well. The creep factor here is just, you know, through the roof. 
Um, I think that if you're looking for something that's just gonna get you racing and it's just a good little ghost story, uh, definitely this. Some incredible special effects uh, artwork in this. Um, yeah, I can't sing its praises enough. I think this is a really great film and um, it packs a little punch, so check it out. Next up, we have John Simpson's 2008 film, Amusement. This is an anthology film and I found this, it was kind of on like an unmarked box at a video store and I, had, I knew nothing about it. I kind of bought it when I was just binging a lot of movies and it stood out and it has stayed in my collection ever since. Um, this film is really, really cool. It does a lot of interesting things and it has a lot of good scary moments. Arguably the scariest clown sequence I have ever seen uh, in any movie and I think you should check it out It is uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So yeah, all right I'm gonna mislead you guys here just a second. I'm going to not talk about terrifier, but I'm going to take a trip back to 2013 the birthplace of Art the Clown, which is an anthology film called All Hallows Eve. Um, it's a different guy playing Art the Clown, but still some really, really scary moments with Art the Clown, and, and it, it did go on to end up being Terrifier and then eventually Terrifier 2. So um, I would say these are actually kind of a fun double feature to watch together. I would ignore Mischief Night. That's just a, it's a double feature combo Blu-ray that I think is the only time that you can actually get All Hallows Eve. So uh, check out All Hallows Eve if you like Terrifier and if, you, if you've never seen Terrifier, definitely check out both of these this season. I have saved my personal favorite and the best for last. If you go an entire Halloween without ever watching Earnest Scared Stupid, then you are making a grave, grave mistake. This movie is directed by John Cherry, um, and it is wacky, it is fun. Also another example of a movie that probably wouldn't get made for kids, um, but there's some scary themes. Just to give credit to that, I actually never rolled over in my bed for at least 10 years of my childhood because I was so afraid of some of the scenes in this movie. Um, it, it features trolls and it is awesome. Um, I was terrified of these trolls and quite literally this movie shaped my childhood and my love for horror films. So I cannot recommend another movie more than Ernest Scared Stupid. Uh, this movie is going to be a blast. You can watch it with kids. Just know that there are some dark themes that even the writers and the directors didn't even know were going to come off as, as scary. Um, I actually got the opportunity to watch this live with the director and producer and a Q&A. And it was funny because it's a lot of just 30 year old men sitting in a room with no kids. And, uh, and all of us asked the exact same question. Did you realize you were actually making something that would terrify children? Um, with that being said, it probably isn't going to scare any kids nowadays. They've been exposed to so much garbage. Um, but this movie as a kid freaked me the hell out. So please watch Ernest Scared Stupid. It is a goofy Halloween comedy with some horror fun and some great atmosphere. And you would be absolutely mistaken to let this season go by and not let this come on your screen at least one time. And that is it. I hope you guys have an incredible Halloween, a safe Halloween, and and get to watch as many movies as you can because unfortunately there's not a lot else we can do right now. So filling your life with movies is going to be a lot of fun. Um, enjoy your Halloween season, and if you don't get to all of these movies within this week, uh, definitely extend it. Who cares? Halloween can last all year round if we want it to. Uh, this is Jake Parker with The Collector's Crypt. Please find me on Twitter at CollectCrypt and uh, let's talk there, let's have a good time, and uh, follow me in the comments, like and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks.